I guarantee if you watch this video till the end, you will know how to lose belly fat in seven days. These are the clients that I've worked with in the last six months. Shannon, Omar, Edgar, Nicholas, Wayne, Manny, Dr. Ruth, David, and so much more. They all have two things in common. The first thing is that they all had belly fat and the second thing, they're my clients. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Michael Diamond. I'm a scientist and an ex-medical doctor and the founder of Sculpt by Science. I believe I can help people from preventing them getting into the hospital in the first place because of their health and fitness. I've lost all of my belly fat as well, multiple times. In 2014 was the first time I went from 30% body fat to 10%, undoubtedly the most challenging and enduring journey I've ever been on. Every winter I go through my bulking phase, I'll pack on a significant amount of fat tissue with muscle and right before the summer, I'll cut down following these 5 steps that I'll share in this video with you. I've done this multiple times now for nearly a decade, using myself as an experiment and now I dedicate my life to helping other people achieve the same. Calories is stored energy. This yellow part is represented by a fat tissue which is stored energy, think of it as a battery. So you have the belly fat and you can see the red here which is your 6 pack. and. It's in there, you can feel it sometimes if you press it, and this is what you typically do. You realize you have too much belly fat, and then you start going to the gym just a little bit, and you're seeing some progress, and then you decide to eat a little bit healthier, you stop going to have a Starbucks Frappuccino, and you decide to stop having a McDonald's, but it's not a significant enough debt, and you're very irritated after about a month of trying, but you're seeing some progress, but it's not anything significant. And this is where the worst part comes. After a month, you decide, you know what, I deserve a cheat meal, and all of that work that you put in is actually erased. However, with what I'm going to show you in the rest of this video, if you follow it consistently for more than two months, three months, four months, you'll see it make a significant change and you'll see over time that your belly fat will reduce and then that's step one. Step two is going to allow you to see the next step and allow that speed up process to be even more. When you're at step three, it is then consistent and you're addicted to your progress. Step four will allow you to see the progress you want. And the only way for it to be in a week is if you do surgery. But I promise, if you just stay consistent with it, this is gonna be the sustainable way to do it. And you'll finally see your six pack. I'm sorry, I don't know. <laughs> you can lose belly fat in one week. What you can't do is lose all of it in one week. It's impossible to go from 30% body fat to 10% in one week or lose a tremendous amount of fat in that time. Fat loss is also not site specific. You lose fat holistically over time. But in step one, I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do to achieve the exact same result I have and all of my clients. So step one, this is how your body burns and stores fat. It's happening right now. The green area represents your body storing fat occurring in response to a meal. The blue area represents your body breaking down fat occurring in response to fasting between meals and during sleep. Over a 24 hour period, these will be balanced, assuming you're not consuming more calories than you expand, or the blue portions will be larger burning fat if you're in a caloric deficit. To lose fat, you need to be in a caloric deficit consistently over time. And to lose that belly fat, you need to be in a caloric deficit. As you can see, your body's always either storing or burning fat, and it flips between these states several times every day, well, depending on your eating schedule. Now in the past, you would need to fill out this formula. I know that could be a pain, and before the information and technology I'm gonna share with you now, you'd need to download an app, fill out your email, and it's just a tremendously tedious process before figuring out what your magic number is. What is your caloric deficit? This all changed on November 22nd, 2022. Chat GPT. Which stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. A robot you can talk to. That you can log on to and have a conversation with. AI became accessible to the public for free through a tool called ChatGPT. It is the most powerful tool in the world. For context, you may know this little search engine called Google. It took Google over a year to reach 100 million users. It took ChatGPT two months to reach the same milestone. You can now use AI to figure out how to lose belly fat. So this is what I want you to do. You're a health and fitness expert. I want to lose one pound of fat per week. I want you to calculate how many calories I need to eat to achieve this result. My gender, male, age, 30 years old, height, 5'8", weight, 200 pounds. I want to train five times per week. That is crazy. So you need to consume 2,355 calories per day to approximately lose one pound of fat. I am working with my current coach, Callum, and I've been working with him for the last three months. 
and as of today, I am now eating those exact same calories. The AI did this itself. It's pretty accurate, incredible. And you can follow those macros, you can follow these calories and see results. I'm seeing results right now. You've seen how I have figured out what my calories are. All you need to do is go into the description of this video, go to ChatGPT, I've left a link and copy the exact prompt to figure out what your calories are. And I promise you, if you follow those calories, you will be able to lose weight and you'll be able to lose fat of your resistance training, but watch the rest of the video to know all the steps you need to follow to be able to lose your belly fat. Now, you may be asking, how long will this take? Look at these photos and choose the photo that best represents your current situation. Let's say you fall between 25 and 30% body fat. Let's call that 28%, which is 25 plus 30 divided by 2, which will give you 27 and a half. So let's round it off and say you're at 28% body fat and you want to see a full six pack, which is 12%. This means you need to lose 16% body fat. If you want it fast, you can lose 1% per week and it will take you 16 weeks, but it will be hard and you'll be hungry. If you want it slow and steady, you can lose about half a percent and it will take you 32 weeks, but it will be much easier. That being said, AI can only do so much. It can't interpret your energy levels on a day to day or figure out why you're plateauing or intervening if something isn't going right. A week may pass and you're stuck and it'll be hard to figure out why. This is exactly what I do for my clients. They're busy professionals, they're entrepreneurs, they're in the tech industry or they're in the C-suite of their job. They've crushed it in their career and as a result, they've paid it for it with their health. If you want your energy back, you want a guaranteed way and I will guarantee that you'll lose all of your belly fat you're done making excuses right now. Scroll down and go into the description of this video. Fill out the application for one on one coaching with me and I'll get in contact with you and help you finally see your six pack. Step two, the goal isn't to lose weight. It's to lose as much fat as possible and retaining or building as much muscle at the same time. And the only way we can do this is lifting heavy ass weight. You don't just want to get rid of the belly fat, but you want rock hard abs waiting for you once you've shipped off all those layers. And this is what I want you to do. Number one, build muscle through resistance training. When you perform resistance training, you can cause microscopic damage to the muscle fibers. Your body then repairs and rebuilds these fibers, making them larger and stronger. This process is known as muscle hypertrophy. I want you to also focus on increasing your strength. With regular resistance training, you'll see an increase in your strength. Each and every single exercise, try and grow up in the weights you use. The more weight you can lift, the bigger the muscle, and the same will go with your abs. Don't just do crunches, but do weighted crunches. That way, when you strip off that fat in step one, you'll have rock hard abs waiting for you once all that belly fat is gone. This will change your body composition. Resistance training can help you lose fat while building muscle, which can improve your overall body body composition and give you that more toned look you're after. So with open Pandora's box and you're probably wondering where can I get a good training program for yourself? Well, let's rely on AI. And before asking AI, I want you to decide realistically, how many times can you go to the gym? Is it three times? Four? Can you go five times? Let's say for this video, you decide you can go five times in a week. I want you to type this into the AI. You're the world's number one fitness trainer. I want you to build me a five day resistance training program, focusing on building muscle and losing fat and let AI do its magic. If you're injured, let it know and it will accommodate you. Or you want to put more focus on a specific body part and it has you covered. Now that's everything to do with resistance training. The next step I use to speed up or slow down fat loss for my clients. If you've stuck with me thus far, it means you're serious about your results. For the next 24 hours, I'll be helping everyone figure out their right macros. In the comments down below, give me your age, weight, height, your gender, your current body fat percentage based off of these photos I'm showing you right now. Choose the one that you think you're the closest to and how many times you train and I will recommend the best macros for you. Step three, the best cardio to lose belly fat. The answer is the cardio you enjoy. So I have clients who play basketball, they'll golf, they'll play soccer or even go on runs. The only thing I tell them to do is hit a certain step goal at the end of the day and that's a non-negotiable. Walking is a more superior form of cardio than HIT, and it will help you tap into that belly fat with low intensity, high duration walking. Walking is a low intensity exercise, which means you can do it for long periods of time. The body primarily uses fat as a fuel source during low to moderate intensity exercise. Therefore, even though the rate of calorie burn
burn might be lower than during high intensity exercise, the total number of fat calories burned can be higher due to the longer duration of the activity. Look at my client Nicholas. All he did was walk in this 30 day period and look at how his belly fat disappeared. It's also accessible and sustainable. Walking is accessible to almost everyone and doesn't require any special equipment, making it an easy activity to incorporate into your daily routine. Because it's so low impact and easy on the joints, it's also more sustainable and has a lower risk of injury compared to high intensity workouts. This means you're more likely to stick with it long term, which is crucial for fat loss. It will also increase your non-exercise activity thermogenesis, NEAT. It is the energy expended for everything we do that is not sleeping, eating, or sports like exercise. It includes activities like walking to work, doing household chores, or even fidgeting. Increasing your need can significantly contribute to increasing your total daily energy expenditure and walking is a great way to do this. It will improve your insulin sensitivity. Regular walking can help improve your body's response to insulin, which can help you reduce fat storage and promote fat loss, particularly in individuals with insulin resistance. It also promotes your heart health. Walking is a fantastic cardiovascular exercise that can improve your heart health, reduce the risk of chronic disease, and support overall wellness making it easier for you to stay active and continue burning calories. It'll also have its mental health benefits. Walking, particularly outdoors, has been associated with reduced stress, better mood, and improved sleep. These factors can indirectly support weight loss by reducing stress-induced eating and improving metabolic health. So let me give you the 16-week cardio routine I gave to my client and now client success manager, Tori. In week one to two, he did 8,000 steps. Week three to four, we increased that to 9,500 steps minimum. Week five to six, 11,000 steps. Week six to eight, he was doing 12,000 steps. Week nine to 12, 15,000 steps. And week 12 to 16, I told Tori to give it everything he's got and hit 20,000 steps. I highly recommend starting at 8,000 steps. These are the five ways you can do that. Number one is a morning walk. Start your day with a brisk walk. It could be around your neighborhood, a local park, or even just on a treadmill if you have one. Morning walks not only contribute to your step count, but will also help wake you up and set up for a positive tone for the day. Two, walking meetings. If you're having a phone call or a meeting during the day, try turning some of them into walking meetings. This is particularly easy for phone calls. Simply get up and walk while you're talking. For an in-person meeting, suggest a walk and talk if it's appropriate. For my clients, if they're on Zoom calls, I'll suggest for them to buy an under the desk treadmill and get their steps done during the meeting. Three, walk on your breaks. Use your lunch break or other breaks throughout the day for the opportunity to get some steps in. Even a short 10 minute walk can add an extra 1000 daily steps. Four, parking further away. If you drive to work or you're running errands, try and park further away from the entrance. For those extra steps between your car and your destination can add up quickly every time. Five, setting up an hourly reminder. Sitting for long periods can cause step counts to be stagnant. So set a reminder to get up and move around every hour. It could be as simple as walking to the water cooler and back or taking a quick lap around the office of your home. Step four, reduce stress. Did you know that stress can cause you to gain body fat? Yes, sadly, it's true. And it does so through several mechanisms. Stress increases cortisol production, which can increase your appetite. Stress can cause insomnia, which also affects appetite regulation and food choice. Stress can lead to reduced physical activity, which can cause weight gain as well. The effect of stress on your appetite is the biggest issue if you're looking to reduce your belly fat. A study in 2001 found that women who had high levels of cortisol were more likely to eat high sugar foods and to overeat in general. It's not always possible to reduce stress. If, for example, you work as a nurse or a firefighter, you're gonna be stressful. However, if you can find better ways to manage stress, therapy, supplementation, meditation, which I personally do, and you can try and reduce your exposure to it where possible. This can also help you sleep better, which brings me to step five, sleep more. The general consensus is that to burn fat, you need to spend more time moving and less time being sedentary. So the advice to go lay down in your bed for a few hours may seem strange, but there's a lot of evidence that sleeping longer can help you burn fat. The reason for this is that bad sleep, 
which I consider less than 7 hours each night, has a number of downsides. It can cause fatigue, which will reduce your daily activity levels. A 2009 meta-analysis theorized that poor sleep could actually lead to reduction in non-exercise activity thermogenesis, your NEAT. And I mentioned, NEAT is a measure of all the calories you burn through non-exercise. A lot of this is subconscious, running up the stairs instead of walking, fidgeting while sitting at your desk. Remember the last time you were tired, when small tasks like tying your shoelaces felt like an effort? Compare that to your fully rested self when you find yourself speeding around the kitchen, cleaning up or pacing up and down at a fast rate while on the phone. These small movements don't burn many calories on their own, but when combined throughout the day, week, month, they can contribute to a lot of your metabolism. Poor sleep therefore can make a huge difference to your body weight by affecting energy expenditure. This is not the only way in which poor sleep can lead to weight gain. There is evidence that bad sleep can affect your appetite. There are three ways it does this. Bad sleep can lead to reduced leptin levels, a hormone that helps you feel full after food. Bad sleep can lead to increased ghrelin, a hormone that makes you feel hungry. Sleeping badly can lead to your brain seeking out high calorie foods by activating the same receptors as marijuana. As you can see, an increased appetite for high calorie foods and a reduced number of calories burned through activities can make losing belly fat much harder. Improving your sleep quality and duration can help you with your mood as well. It will lower your cortisol levels. It can speed up recovery from intense workouts. Aim for seven to eight hours of good quality sleep each night, and you could see some serious changes on the scales. And the bonus tip, because you've made it this far, is be consistent. In all of my transformations, for me to even just lose that last part of my belly fat, it's taken me at least four months. And this is why my clients will work with me for a minimum of four months, because you won't see any change in one month. It didn't take you a month to become fat, it took you years. And the same will happen to be able to lose that belly fat. So be consistent. You may fail one day, you may fail one week, but as long as you keep getting back up and being consistent and going for it and going on a streak, you'll see that belly fat come away. So the only way you'll lose belly fat in one week will be through surgery. But I highly recommend against because you're not fixing the problem. You're treating a symptom and you're not treating the actual cause. So be consistent. Follow the tips I've left in this video. And if you want to work with me directly, you want me to change your habits. You want me to help you change the habits in your home as well. Then fill out the application in the description below and I'll get in contact with you. If you have questions, if you want me to help you figure out your macros, comment them down below and I'll help you with that. If you did enjoy the video and you're here, leave the video the gentle thumbs up and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.